In the previous video, we already discussed how to create an Illustrator document. The document we created uses one single artboard, which I mentioned also that is working or acting like a page, a dedicated area that we can save or export into independent files. In this video, I will show you how to work with these artboards. So first of all, what we need to learn is how to create or add multiple artboards in a file. The easiest way to do it is to use this tool called the Artboard tool. So once you select that, it actually highlights your current artboard and it even shows you the name of that artboard and the number of it. So this is the first artboard in this document and it's called Artboard 1. By clicking on it, you can move it around within your document. And if you click and drag on an additional area within the document, you can create a new artboard. Once I let go, you can see it created artboard number two. If I want, I can rename the artboard while it's selected. So I can type in something here. Let's just call this one banner. And if I select the other one, I can call that logo. The whole point of having multiple artboards in a document is that you can keep all the relevant designs in one place. So for example, in case of a branding project, you can have all the elements like a leaflet, business card, logo, and all the variations that you need of the design all in one file, just separated into independent artboards. So let me show you an example. Taking this design a little bit further, I would have multiple versions of it and already colored. We will learn how to do these later, but here I already have three artboards. So on the left, you can see the original design, but added colors using the color palette from the Adobe icons. And then we have the Photoshop version of the same design and then the InDesign version of the same design. Here you can also see the date when these products were first introduced. So each of these designs are on separate artboards which means I can save them out individually. Let me show you how I would do that. I can go up to the file menu and choose export, export as. Now there's many other ways of doing this, but this is one of the ways that you can export artboards individually into in independent files. So if I choose this option, at the bottom I can find several file formats out of which I'm going to pick JPEG which is a raster image file format. So it's not going to keep it as a vector files anymore. It's going to turn it into a pixel image. Now, if you are not familiar with the difference between pixels and vectors, I will come to that in another video as well and I will explain it thoroughly. But for now, let's just stick to saving these files. So once you choose a format like JPEG or PNG in the export command, you can also decide which artboards you wish to save. You can choose all, or you can also choose a range. So if I only want, let's say, the first and second, I can type it in like that, or I can also type in first comma three, which will skip the second artboard. And this is when it becomes important to remember the order of your artboards. So the numbers that you can see in the artboards in the background are the ones that you need to remember when you want to save them out. So in this case, the second one would be skipped, which is the Photoshop artboard. But I am going to keep all selected. Of course, you can decide where you want to save the files. I'm just going to put them in a different folder and then I will click on export. Now, once you export into a pixel file format, you can also decide the size of these files and quality and color mode. For now, I will just keep everything the same as the default settings, but later we will come back to these as well. So I will just click OK. And what happens is that Illustrator exports each of these artboards as separate files. So when I visit that folder, I will see three JPEG files. There's the first one, second and third. So that is one of the main reasons why you would use artboards and have multiple designs in one document. But throughout this course, you will see many other uses of artboards. For now, what we need to learn is how to work with them. So apart from creating new artboards, you can also copy artboards. 
For that, you still would use the Artboard tool. And the only thing you need to remember is to hold down the Alt or Option key and click and drag an artboard. That way you are not only duplicating the whole design within that artboard, but you also create a new artboard. There is an important option up here in the options bar, which means whenever this is enabled, the artwork is connected to the artboard on which it's placed. If you turn this off, and you start moving an artboard, it's going to be independent from the design on it. Sometimes this might be useful, but most of the time I like to keep this enabled. If you want to delete an artboard, you can just click on this X icon here on the top. Once again, as long as you have the artboard tool selected, you will see this option. And once you delete it, it might not delete the design itself. So you might need to select the design if you don't need that anymore and then press delete or backspace on the keyboard to quickly get rid of it. It is also important to remember that your artboards have an order in which they are created. So once again, when I select the artboard tool, we can see this is number one, two and three. But what if I want to swap the order of them and I want Photoshop to be the last one? So I can easily move them around and reposition them within my document, but that doesn't mean that the number will update. So the order of the artboards is still one, two, three. And in this case, I don't even have them named. So that would probably be useful to do. I will just name the second one Photoshop on the right. The third one I will call InDesign. And the first one I will call Illustrator. Now, the names are there, but still the order is not right. So the easiest way to reorder your artboards and update the numbering is by using the panel called Artboards, which you will find here at the bottom of the panel icons. Once I click on that, I will see the three artboards there and I can drag InDesign up in the order so now it became the second one and also you see the numbering updated here within the document area. In the artboards panel, you can also double click on an artboard to quickly zoom onto that and have it fit to your screen. I can do that with Illustrator, Photoshop and so on and so forth. Here I can also see that I have three artboards in this document. And it's good to know that you can have up to 99 artboards at the moment in an Illustrator file. Let me switch back to the other document. So I come here on the document tab, select the other document. And when I select an artboard, I can also choose a size for it instead of just drawing it randomly. Here when an artboard is selected, on the top I have a presets drop down from which I can choose all the different sizes that are saved into Illustrator. So it has a list of print sizes, then video formats, then mobile devices, and even screen sizes at the bottom. You can even have your custom sizes saved here. But for now, let me just try to select letter. Once I choose that, you will see that it updates and now it became much bigger. At this point, you can also see that artboards can even overlap each other. So you can even have elements of design saved in two different artboards. Of course, most of the time you want to keep them separate. So that's exactly what I'm doing here as well, separating these two artboards. The same way you can change the size to a preset, you can also change the orientation of your artboards by switching between landscape and portrait up here. If you wish to type in a certain size, you can also add that here. This is the width of the currently selected artboard and this is the height. So let's say I want to change this to 200 by 200, a square format. I can very quickly do that. Now there's one last thing you need to know about artboards and that is when you create a new document, so I will choose File, New. There, you have an option to automatically create a new document with multiple artboards and even arrange them in any way that you wish. So if I type in, let's say, six artboards, 
I can already see that I have options how I want these to be arranged. Grid by row, grid by column, or just in one row or single column. And I can even change the order, so left to right or right to left. And in case of using grid by row, I can also type in exactly how many columns I wish to use and how much space I want between these artboards. So let me type in a smaller artboard size, 100 by 100 millimeters. And if I click OK, I will have six square artboards created in that grid layout that I set up. Now that we know how artboards work, it's important to also learn more about the navigation in Illustrator documents. And that's what I'm going to explain in the next video.